Thank you, John, and thank you all for being here today. We just had a great visit with the Senator, and it's a really good opportunity to show off our Traffic Operations Center. We're obviously <laughs> very proud of it, of just all the amazing people that work here. You know, it feels a little bit like a full circle for some of us. You know, the TOC was really rushed to finish, uh, to get open before the Olympics. And you know, at the Olympics, we had this vision. We sat down for, in transportation and said, we wanted to envision the perfect Olympic day. And for us in transportation, we said that would be that nobody noticed transportation because it just works. That's when they notice transportation, it just works. And so um, Senator Romney, I know, has a goal for transportation as well. And for him, success looks like nothing but green lights out there. Nobody, nobody ever hits a red light. And so we want to thank him for helping us. He's going to be able to help us get there uh, with what he's doing in Washington right now. And so he's back here you know, 20 years later at the TOC with this goal of helping us get to a world-class transportation traffic signal system. So uh, with that, um, let me just say that it's our dream um, that under the infrastructure bill that is under consideration, is that a fair way to put it at yeah. this point right now, Senator, even though it's out of the Senate, it will enable us to continue to do this really important work that we have in front of us. Um, and without really the tireless work of the Senator, we wouldn't be where we are today. So we're quite excited to have him with us today. So. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you want Thanks. me to get rid of that? Thank, no, that's fine. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, good to be here. This, uh, this agency is a model for the nation, and I'm, I'm sure you've heard that before, but those that evaluate various transportation departments uh, place Utah at the top. And, uh, and that's in part because of the dedication not only to zero fatalities, but also recognizing that allowing people to get to and from their place of employ or the place they're shopping as quickly as possible is good for their economy and good for the lives of Utahns. And, uh, and they have established a system of networks with, with regards to our traffic signals and other provisions, incident management and so forth, that's really at the top of their, of their league. And, uh, and as a driver uh, from time to time in our home state, it is, uh, it is good to have that kind of leadership. Uh, we're working together in Washington with UDOT and with their help to see if we can't provide funding for even smarter intersections where people are able again to see green lights as often as possible and wait at red lights unnecessarily as infrequently as possible. And so in the most recent infrastructure bill we have a provision which relates to smart intersections and provides grants to states, hopefully to our own, that allows us to put in place even greater technology to reduce wait times at lights, to improve traffic flow, to respond more quickly to traffic incidents. Now that infrastructure bill is something that's been negotiated between Republicans and Democrats. As you know, it's been passed by the Senate. It's before the House right now. They're a bit tangled up in their underwear in the House in terms of trying to deal with it. But we'd like to get our Democrat friends to, uh, to pass that piece of legislation. The President has said he wants to sign it. And uh, we certainly believe it'll make a difference for the people of our state and the people of the country to do so. Uh, it provides for $3 billion for improving roads, highways, and bridges here in Utah, hundreds of millions of dollars for water projects, funding to expand broadband throughout rural uh, Utah, transit dollars as well, money for rail projects. All these things are part of this infrastructure bill. It's hard infrastructure only in our bill. And it's, uh, and, and I think in the view of most people, desperately needed in our country. Uh, our state's in better shape than most, but we get our formula share of these funds and we'll use them not only to improve the system that we already have, to, but make sure that we're able to have the system that we'll need given the growth of our state over the coming decades. With that, I'll take any questions about transportation or anything else that's on your mind. Before I leave, I just want to uh, express appreciation for the men and women who serve in our military and express deep sympathy and sorrow for the loss of some 13 lives of our service people uh, in Afghanistan today. It is with heavy heart that we consider their sacrifice. We've lost 27 men and women in Afghanistan over the last several years. And their sacrifice was for a real purpose because over these last 20 years, they have helped keep America safe. Afghanistan was the place from which Al-Qaeda launched the attack on 9-11 that took thousands of American lives and brought down the World Trade Center. And America responded by going to Afghanistan, taking down the Taliban, taking out Al-Qaeda. We've been there the last 20 years to keep ourselves safe and to keep them from reconstituting. And the men and women of Utah, whose lives have been laid down during those 20 years, 
did so in order to protect their fellow Americans and their fellow Utahns. And to them, we owe a lifetime of gratitude. With that, any questions you might have. Senator Robin Jason Wynn with ABC4. Uh, the big question is, have you reached out to any of the Utah House of Representatives to persuade them to vote for the bipartisan infrastructure bill? And uh, part of Afghanistan and the talks about Afghanistan is the withdrawal. Do you feel that the withdrawal that we are doing right now by the 31st, is that going to be enough to get people out of Afghanistan safely? Well, first of all, the answer uh, to the first question is yes. Uh, I have reached out to uh, members of our delegation in, uh, in the House of Representatives and encouraging Republicans to vote for the infrastructure bill. Uh, I, I think it's, it, it's hard for people to understand. Our bill is not perfect. It's bipartisan. That means there's some things Republicans like and there's some things Democrats like. I'd take out some of the things Democrats like, but to get a bill done, you need to have both parties come together. And, uh, and so I point out to my Republican colleagues, you need to vote for this because if we don't, the Democrats, given their majority in both houses, can do something on their own without any help from us. And what they would do on their own will be a heck of a lot worse than the bipartisan bill, whichever flaw it may have that you wanted to point to. Uh, that was your, your first question. Second question related to Afghanistan, Afghanistan and how they're doing. Um, look, let me just give you perspective on Afghanistan. We went there to eliminate the threat from Al Qaeda and to knock down the Taliban for the fact that they hosted Al Qaeda, which led to our attack on 9-11. We stayed there for 20 years because we knew if we left that Al Qaeda would reconstitute itself and attack us again. So we were there to protect America. I believe we were wrong, both President Trump and President Biden, to take our troops out of Afghanistan. I think we should have stayed there to maintain a presence, to, to stand up the Afghan military, 250,000 strong, 5,000 American troops behind them would be able to keep us strong. I think that was a mistake. That being said, if you disagree with me and we think we should have pulled out, the fact that it's been, the way, the way it's been pulled out uh, has not been a, uh, a great example of American capability. As a matter of fact, it's been a tragedy, and in many respects, we've lost credibility around the world. Uh, nations of the world are astonished at the way we have uh, left the country. Uh, a tragedy occurred today. I hope there are no more. But without question, it's essential as part of our national character to leave no person behind. And that includes our troops, as well as the Afghans who fought with us. And I fear that uh, if we're not uh, committed to that principle, uh, that we could violate a sacred principle that our military and nation has held dear for as long as I can remember. Please. Well, the most important thing the president can do right now is to do everything in his power to make sure we leave no one behind. Leave no one behind as part of our national character. Uh, leave none, no American citizen behind, no member of our military, none of the people who fought with us. And, uh, and that's the mission. That's got to be carried out. And that's where his entire focus is right now. There will be time down the road for him to focus on uh, exacting justice on those people from ISIS that have been responsible for today's bombing. That does not require a massive military incursion of some kind. It's typically done either through uh, aerial strike from a drone uh, or uh, through a, co a commando type unit of some kind. So that, that'll happen down the road. We have plenty of time to do that. And uh, uh, we, have, uh, we have the patience to make sure that those people who've killed American servicemen and women uh, pay very deeply uh, with their lives uh, for the lives of our brave men and women. Thank you. Yes, hi. There are elements in our bill that, that does relate to reducing emissions. Uh, so for instance, we have several major projects uh, in the energy sector, which are designed to get us off of fossil fuels and allow us to use new sources of fuel. So we have $5 billion for a hydrogen project to see if we can use hydrogen to power our various vehicles, as well as provide uh, uh, electric generation. Likewise, $5 billion for nuclear technology a new approach to nuclear technology, small nuclear reactors that can provide power for, for communities and, if you will, charge our electric vehicles. 
So, uh, and then there's the same thing with regards to battery technologies and other electric technologies. All these are designed to see if we can't find ways to provide the power for electric vehicles, uh, electric vehicles, of course, being far less emitting uh, than gasoline combustion engines. And that's, that's part of this legislation as well. So when I say hard infrastructure, I mean um, uh, broadband, rail, transit, transit as well. Uh, is a way of reducing uh, carbon emissions. And we look at uh, the, the, the West Valley of our, uh, of our Salt Lake City area really needs transit of some kind. We don't have that yet. So th these kinds of funds are available to do that and will helpfully reduce emissions against our, our mountains. One of the challenges with having the Wasatch Front right there is, uh, is that it traps gases and, uh, and creates a, uh, a, 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 a hazard, a health hazard, and that's something we're going to have to address. Thank you. Yes. I hope we recognize that, uh, that those Afghan refugees are people who fought with us and helped us, and we want them very badly, if they can get here, to be able to come to our country and participate in our workforce. I met this morning with uh, the uh, leaders of perhaps 15 or 20 different manufacturers here in Utah. The number one problem they have is finding enough workers. They would love to have some of these Afghans come here and be able to work uh, in, our, in our community. So let's welcome them with open arms, uh, teach them. In many cases, they know the language. They were, they were translators. They worked with our troops. So they'll be able to work with us here. Uh, we bring in far more than 100,000 every month that come in illegally across our southern border. Let's bring in these legal folks from Afghanistan who fought with us and provide them with the opportunities to make an employee here uh, and to contribute to our economy. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the truth is I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with what's in the infrastructure bill for Utah. We got $50 million for the Central Utah uh, Water Project. We got $200 million to get running water to members of the Navajo Nation uh, in the southeast portion of our state. So specific needs uh, we were able to address. And most of the funding in the infrastructure bill goes out based on formula. So each state gets a percent based upon the formula that's been in place for years. Now, I would like our share of that formula to be bigger, but we didn't change the formula in the legislation. Uh, so we get roughly of the $110 billion going to highways and roads and bridges, we get about $3 billion of that. Uh, and uh, and I, I didn't pick a bone with that. Now, the, the truth is I would rather have had more money going in to roads and bridges and a little less going into transit. But that wasn't my call. I'd prefer to have had a little less going into rail just that President Biden really cares about rail. They, they call him uh, Joe Amtrak, Amtrak right, Amtrak Joe, all right? So there's more money in there for Amtrak than I'd have put in on my own. But, uh, but we each had to make some, some compromises. I, I would have rather had more user fees. Uh, for instance, I propose that, that electric vehicles be charged a, a vehicle mild, miles travel tax so that they would pay the same uh, fee that a gasoline power vehicle pays for the use of the highways. But the president said, we're not charging anybody who makes under $40,000 a year any more money, no increase in fees. That was a red line for him. So uh, there are some, would I, would I make the bill different, different if it were just mine? Sure. But the nature of bipartisanship is each side has to be satisfied with the conclusion. Thank you. Okay, guys, I can let you get out of the sun. Thanks. Appreciate your being here today. And uh, uh, appreciate the uh, UDOT and their welcoming me here today to the Transportation Operations Center, and uh, I, I hope they make sure the lights for all of us are as green as possible. Thanks, guys.